dear student welcome to epg patshala today i am going to present my module with the topic chemical properties of soil the mineral composition of soil the organic matter within it and the environment all are determined by the chemical properties of the soil chemistry of soil influence by the components like cation exchange capacity ph nutrient soil deposition etc soil chemistry involves the relationship between the minerals water and other elements in the soil the clay minerals are known to play important role in soil chemistry clay minerals are composed of silicon and oxygen called silicates the soil exchange capacity is governed mostly by the amount and kind of clay and organic matter content in the soil therefore the level of the exchange capacity is related largely to the characteristics of the soil and texture moreover the soil having high organic matter also have high exchange capacity the exchange cation exchange capacity of soil is the capacity to hold and exchange essential cations the soil fertility is determined by the proper balance of nutrient in the soil the amount of different plant nutrients in soil is being studied through the cation exchange capacity of the soil other important parameters like ph of the soil also gives the quick estimate of the balance between the plant nutrients element in the soil like calcium magnesium potassium and the other non nutrient elements such as hydrogen and aluminum at low ph soil usually exhibit relatively low amount of cation exchange occupied by potassium magnesium and calcium whereas at high ph the solubility of many metals and trace elements is decreased including essential nutrients for plants such as iron manganese copper and extreme ph at extreme ph values also have negative impact on soil biological properties decreasing by decreasing the microbial activities in the soil cation exchange capacity of the soil we start with this most chemical interactions occurring in soil on colloidal surfaces are because of their charged surfaces colloids have charged surfaces because of their chemical makeup and large surface area which attracts ions present in the soil depending on the ionic charge size and concentration in the soil ions are absorbed by the colloid colloid surface or exchanged with other ions and released to the soil solution the figure is showing the cation exchange capacity in the clay humus complex after this factor affecting cation exchange capacity soil texture soil organic matter nature of clay minerals soil reactions all are affecting the soil cation exchange capacity soil texture the negatively charged clay colloids attract positively charged cations and retain them therefore the cation exchange capacity of soil rises with the rise in the percentage of clay content or the organic matter clay soil with high cation exchange capacity can hold large quantity of cations and reduce the loss of cations by leaching sandy soils with low cation exchange capacity hold lesser amount of cations and thus cations are excavated from the soil by leaching and whole of this process is shown in the figure 27.2 soil organic matter high organic matter content increases the cation exchange capacity the cation exchange capacity of clay minerals varies from 10 to 150 kg per kg whereas that of organic matter ranges from 200 to 400 per kg the nature of clay minerals the cation exchange capacity and the specific area of clay minerals are in order of smithsite fine mica and kaolinites thus the cation exchange capacity of a soil dominated by semisite type of clay minerals is much higher than kaolinite type dominated soils soil reactions as the ph is increased 
the hydrogen held by the organocolloids and silicate clays becomes ionized and replaceable. The net result is enhancement of negative charge on the collides and in turn an increase in cation exchange capacity. Next is the importance of cation exchange. Cation exchange is an important parameter in determination of soil fertility, soil acidity and basicity that results in altering soil physical properties as well as in mechanism for purifying or altering percolating waters. Plant potassium. The exchangeable magnesium is often a major source of plant magnesium. The amount of lime required to raise the pH of an acidic soil is greater as the cation exchange capacity is greater. Cation exchange sites holds calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium and ammonium ion and slow down their loses by leaching. Cation exchange sites hold fertilizers, potassium and ammonia and greatly reduce their mobility in soil. Cation exchange sites absorb various metals which are present in wastewater adsorptions, removes them from the percolating water, thus purifying the water which drains into groundwater. The soil ability to absorb an exchange ion is known as exchange capacity. Although both positive and negative charges are present on collide surface, soil of these regions are dominated by negative charges and have an overall net negative charge. Therefore, more cations are attracted to exchange sites than anions and soils tends to have greater cation exchange capacity in comparison to anion exchange capacities. The fine texture soil usually have a greater exchange capacity than coarse soil because of higher proportion of collides. And this process of cation exchange capacity is also being shown in the figure 27.2 where the clay and the loom soil is depicting the cation exchange capacity. In the clay soil, more positions are there to hold cations in comparison to the fewer positions for holding cations in sand loom soil. Next is soil pH. Soil pH is associated with the soil's acidity or alkinity and is the measure of hydrogen ions in the soil. A large amount of hydrogen relates to the low pH value and contrary. The pH scales varies from 0 to 14 with 7 being neutral, below 7 acidic and above 7 alkaline or basic. The pH can influence cation exchange capacity and anion exchange capacity by changing the surface charge of collides. A higher concentration of hydrogen ions will nullify the negative charge on collides, thus decreasing cation exchange capacity and increasing anion exchange capacity. The opposite occurs when pH increases. Whole of this mechanism is being shown in the figure 27.3. Next is the importance of soil pH in crop production. First, it is useful in determining the availability of plant nutrients. Example, phosphorus is fixed by aluminum and iron oxides at the low pH and at high pH it is fixed by calcium. Therefore, phosphorus is available maximally at the near neutral pH. pH affect the availability of toxic amounts of minerals and elements that can diminish the crop growth also. It manipulates the population and activities of beneficial microbes also. Next is salt affected soil. The presence and concentration of salt in soil can have conflicting impact on soil function as well as management. Salt affected soils mostly occur in arid and semi-arid regions where evaporation surpasses precipitation and dissolved soils are left behind to accumulate or in area where vegetation or irrigation changes have resulted into leaching of soils and accumulation in low lying places. The three main categories of salt affected soils are saline, sodic and saline sodic. Saline soil comprises of large amount of soluble salts primarily calcium, magnesium and potassium. Whereas, sodic soil dominated by sodium ions, saline sodic soil have both high salt and sodium content. Concentration of salt in soil influences the structure, porosity and plant water relations which ultimately leads to reduced productivity. Acidity or alkalinity is an important parameter that affects various other chemical, physical and biological properties of soil. 
Soil acidity is determined as the total amount of acidic present in the soil. The soil reaction is expressed as the soil pH. This is the measure of relatively acidity and alkalinity of the soil. Active acidity is that measured by the soil pH. Reverse res reserve acidity is that left within the soil micro cells. It is usually measured by titrating the soil solution with a base. Now, what are the causes of soil acidity? First, it may be due to the leaching losses of bases like calcium, magnesium, etc. Application of acid forming fertilizers like urea, ammonia, base fertilizers. It may be due to acid rains. Decomposition of organic matter can be another factor. CO2 is evolved. It mixed with soil water to form weak carbonic acid. It may also be the another factor. Hydrolysis of aluminum, aluminum ion plus hydroxide aluminiums. Soil nutrients. 16 elements or nutrients are essential for growth and reproduction in plant such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, boron, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium, magnesium, iron, copper, zinc, molybdenum and chlorine. Nutrients required for plants to complete their life cycles are called as essential nutrients. Nutrients that increase the plant growth but are not important to complete the plant life cycle are also termed as non-essentials. With the exception of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen which are supplied by carbon dioxide and water, the nutrients originates from the mineral components of the soil. Uptake of nutrients by plants can only occur when they are present in a plant available form. In a variety of situation, nutrients are absorbed in an ionic form from soil water. The bulk of most nutrient elements in the soil are retained in crystalline form within primary and secondary minerals to support rapid plant growth. For example, the application of finely grounded minerals, feldspar and apatite to soil seldom provides the necessary amount of potassium and phosphorus at a rate sufficient for proper plant growth as most of nutrients remains bound in the crystal, crystals of those minerals. Plant growth will be hampered if a particular nutrient availability is in limited supply. For example, if there is a deficiency of phosphorus, then the supply of other nutrients will be ineffective until the deficiency of phosphorus is removed. The nutrient adsorbed onto the surface of clay chlorides and soil organic matter provide a more accessible reservoir of many plant nutrients such as potassium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus and zinc. As plant absorbs the nutrients from the soil water, the soluble pool is replaced from the surface bound pool. The decomposition of soil organic matter with the help of microbes is another mechanism whereby the soluble pool of nutrient is replenished. This is important for the regular supply of plant available nutrients from the soil. Next is pathways of mineral nutrients transport in the root. Minerals are absorbed at the surface of the root by the root hairs. While passing through the cortex, they either flow the cell walls and follow the cell walls and the space between them or go directly through the plasma membranes and the protoplast of the cell. Passing from one cell to the next by plasmodesmata, when they reaches the endodermis, their further passage through the cell wall is blocked by the Casparian strips and they must pass through the membrane and the protoplast of endodermal cells before they can reach the xylem. Minerals are absorbed at the surface of root mainly by the root hairs as shown in the figure 27.5. Next is the movement of nutrient from soil to roots. There are three basic mechanisms by which nutrients make contact with the root surface for plant uptake. They are root interception, mass flow and diffusion. Root interception. Root interceptions occurs when a nutrient comes into physical contact with the root surface. As a general rule, the occurrence of root interception increases as the root surface area and mass increases. 
thus enabling the plant to explore a great amount of soil. Root interception increases by mycorrhizal fungi which colonize roots and enhances root exploration into the soil. Root interception is responsible for an appropriate amount of calcium uptake and some amount of magnesium, zinc and manganese. Mass flow occurs when nutrients are transported to the surface of root by the water movement in the soil. The rate of water flow determines the amount of nutrients that are transported to the root surface. Therefore, mass flow decreases. Most of the nitrogen, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, copper, boron, manganese and molybdenum move to the root by the mass flow. Next is diffusion. Diffusion is the process of movement of particular nutrient along a concentration gradient. When there is a difference in the concentration of a particular nutrient within the soil solution, the nutrient will move from an area of higher to the lower concentration. As the sugar dissolves, it moves through parts of water with low sugar concentration until it evenly distributed or uniformly concentrated. Diffusion delivers significant amount of phosphorus, potassium, zinc and iron to the root surface. Diffusion is a relatively slow process in comparison to the mass flow of nutrients with water movement towards the root. Mobility of the nutrients within the soil is closely related to the chemical properties of soil such as cation exchange capacity and anion exchange capacity as well as the soil conditions such as moisture. When there is enough moisture in the soil for leaching to occur, the percolating water can carry dissolved nutrients which will be subsequently lost from the soil profile. The nutrients which are easily leached are usually those nutrients that are, that are less strongly held by the soil particles. For instance, in a soil with high cation exchange capacity and low anion exchange capacity, nitrate will leach much more readily than calcium. Additionally, in such a soil, potassium will leach more readily than calcium since calcium is more strongly held to the soil particles than potassium. To conclude the lecture on chemical properties of soil, I must say that physicochemical characteristics of different soils vary in space and time due to variation in topography, climate, physical weathering processes, vegetation cover, microbial activities and several other biotic and abiotic variables. Most soil chemical properties are associated with the colloid fraction and affect nutrient availability, biota growing conditions and in some cases soil physical properties. The kind and the amount of clay minerals, organic matter and the pH determines the cation exchange capacity. Cation exchange capacity are largely determined by the charge on soil particles and soil organic matter. The soil having high amount of clay organic matter have high cation exchange capacity that is they are able to bind more cations such as calcium or potassium than more silty or sandy soil. On the other hand, soil pH gives an estimate of the balance between the plant nutrient elements and non-nutrient elements. The pH also indicates if agricultural lime is needed for a particular crop or not. but the exact quantity that is required is the function of cation exchange capacity. Each crop has its own level of pH for good production. The change in physicochemical properties of soils lead to infertile or barren soil that does not support normal growth of vegetation for years. Hence, understanding and recognizing soil properties and their connection with one another are important for making sound decision regarding soil uses and management for better production of crops.